So that's that's great that you're getting uh, getting that set up. Yeah, I think we've we've attacked this problem from many different angles, and uh, I think that um, with, with Mike, um, he's kind of like really in the guts of the NeuroML piece, and that he's you know directly um, you know making modifications to libraries and whatnot, and so I think that. Um, been hard, I think, to ramp up for some of this. So, like, what he's saying right now is that, right, is that actually <laughs> we need to modify NeuroML in order to be able to support um, the way that the equations are defined. Um, I had vaguely thought maybe there'd be a way to, to write an equivalent function or something, um, you know, but uh, that sounds really painful too, actually. So, you you can define these kind of channels in NeuroML. But um, they're not top-level components, essentially. You have to get a hodgkin oxy component and then modify the time course element. I mean, it's a detail, but, it, but that's basically not right. The channels are common enough that they should be an, an available component in NeuroML. I've discussed this with Podrick. He's going to introduce that. Um, and then I'll be able to add support the parameter for that kind of channel, um, which will allow, which will mean that you can run this kind of channel in Neuron and Moose, and then we can go ahead and write the write the model and export it to NeuronML and do it all kinds of things. That's cool. Very cool. All right. Well, um, I, I kicked off the meeting just because it sounded like we were already. Um, Getting things going, so um, I wanted. I, I think um, Mike, you're kind of updating folks already, which is great. Um, I um, my agenda here is um, fairly similar to the last time, but we have we have been doing several things. Um, so maybe I'm, I'm trying to figure if there are any other topics um, under the muscle cell stuff. So I mean, do you basically just want to say, Mike, for everybody's benefit here? So you and, you and Alex were going back and forth quite a bit last week. Um, how basically, like, um, how far did you get? What do you see as the next steps? Um, I think you've really kind of already said it, but just just to kind of take a step back for you know for Andre who maybe hasn't uh, hasn't been um, following this from the beginning. Okay, how far we've got? Uh, Alex. Installed Pyramidal and Linear ML and did all the tests on his machine, identified some bugs and um, fixed them. We then found that the current structure of Linear ML is such that it would be hard to implement the Boyle and Cohen model. Uh, Podrick is going to update Linear ML to make that possible, which stage will proceed with the modeling. And also, um, also Andre got my optimization code to work, and he's play, currently playing around with that. Um, and him and I are having a meeting either Saturday or Sunday to discuss where we've got next steps. Wait, Andre? Andre is working with your optimization? Sorry, no, not Andre. I meant I meant Alex. Sorry. Alex. Okay. Okay. I was like, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Very good. So um, just trying to so this is really awesome developments. First of all, awesome that uh, you know we're uh, already driving the, the uh, boundaries of, of NeuroML. Um, it's also awesome because you know Mike and Alex have really kind of you know gotten engaged. I saw several of the um, some of the emails flying back and forth. Um, I I started installing Pyramidal as well myself, and I think I ran into some of the similar issues that, that others have seen. But um, but those are all good because we're getting them all fixed and getting them more robust. Um, Pyramidal is awesome. There's a lot of really great documentation for it. Um, the I'm I'm sorry. I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to share the um, agenda for today and it's not working. Um, so let me just paste it into the chat. But um, basically, I've linked to the I've linked to the document that I'm at least using for tracking, and I, I've updated it a little bit with the um, link to the Pyramidal. Um, Projects so the very first link under updates for muscle cell meeting um, has the tracker for how this is going, um, and um, 
Yeah, so um, will you have to wait for NeuroML like, to get updated, or do you think that um, this could happen pretty quickly in terms of the schema update? Mike? It will happen quickly because it's, a, it's, a, it's not a big update, I, I don't think. I'll, pest, I'll, I'll annoy Podrick a bit and he'll update it, and then, then it will be down to me to uh, re update LibNeuroML and all sorts of things. Uh, yeah, that the near ML side of things shouldn't take long, basically. Okay. But um so as I was saying, I could go ahead and just write the model in neuron, but I think it would make more sense to take a bit more time and do it in pyramidal. Um and that way you know, it's you know it's nice and neuromel compatible and you can do things like exports to neuromel and it just I think fits in with our philosophy a bit more. I don't know what you think. What, what do you think? Yeah. Makes sense. Let me let me add to that um, something you might want to consider, and I, I know I'm probably jumping way ahead here, but um, the uh, sensory organs are also a major concern. Uh, has been a major concern of mine too. The cilia and you know the organelles that, that trigger the uh, sensory neurons uh, need to be defined at some point. So as you're as you're defining the muscles. Um, you, know, you might you might give that a little consideration about a way to generically be able to define some of these things. Um, I mean, sure. The the current project with uh, the current project with the muscle cell, as I see it, is really to get a so far just to get a nice single compartment simulation. Um, of the muscles there, we sort of get a feel, an idea of what the ion channel descriptions should be like, a bit, a bit more experimentally constrained than oil and common one. Um, so that should be pretty compatible, you know, with future developments like introducing organelles. That, that, that uh, it should be, if it's you know, not nice and uh, near mass specified and so forth. That should be, it should be pretty. Pretty straightforward to add add complexity to it. Cool. So yeah, it's not something I'm specifically thinking about, but it's it should be done in such a way that that's not going to be hard. Yeah, I just think it's a logical next step after we get the muscles um, sure. all defined and figured out. You know, the next yeah. step would be to figure out the uh, the input side. I suppose I don't. I don't know what the next step would be. Actually, uh, um, just uh, from from my perspective, this is um, this is defining a you know defining a model, uh, figuring out figuring out the ion channel density and sort of kinetics. After all, this is all going to be done in the simulation engine, uh, not a uh, neuron or moose at the end of the day. So you know, it's more sort of just basic research into the realm of physiology. Anything. Much appreciated. Very cool. Okay, so um, well, that's awesome. Um, is there any more, Mike? Um, should we go to Matteo next? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you're in London. I'm in London. You wanna? Uh, you wanna tell everybody how you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm basically starting this week in the silver lab. Um, so I will be spending more time on the open world than I was spending before, <laughs> since I basically put my daily job on this is not my daily job. And it's not only going to be about open world, but there will be some time that I can allocate on open world development, which is very good. And so we are, uh, and Matteo in Silver Lab means Matteo two days in Silver Lab. So <laughs> it's like we're still in the process, like I'm trying to learn a lot from people around what they're doing and what would make most sense and try to gain some more in depth knowledge into the kind of requirements and constraints that we're going to face uh, when developing the neuronal solver for the stimulation engine. We, we basically, we have a neuronal solver at the moment, which is the 
prototype version that uh, we wrote with uh, Giovanni that leverages GPU. We know that version one, first of all, is not really neural, so that will be the first thing if you have a neural and like a solver that reads neural. The other thing is that uh, ideally down the road we will have to support multi compartments and uh, so in order to support multi compartments you either write a solver that it's able to solve the partial differential equations that are required for the diffusion in the multiple compartments or you use one of the solvers that are pre-existing. Uh, the problem is that the two solvers that exist at the moment do that are pretty much neural and loose, and like none of which would fit particularly nicely in the architecture for the open world. So we basically are in the, in the process of investigating what opportunities we have to push forward some effort to have a job implementation that does multi compartment, but this is all being investigated at the moment, and at the moment I mean that we just stopped talking about it. <laughs> so, there will be more discussions in the following weeks, uh, and then we'll see what would make most sense for the open world project to pursue in terms of neural net solving. Awesome. Um, yeah, since uh, since Porg jumped on, um, and I want to say this was like what like. January or February or something, we went from like zero people in the UK to <laughs> having like three people in the UK. Um, so I think it's a good sign that um, we're integrating with the NeuroML community so well um, that uh, we basically there's no distinction between it anymore. Um, so that's awesome. Um, um, and I'll actually be there in the UK and not next week but the week after that as well. Um, so I look forward to seeing you guys uh, in there. How come? What's that? Why will you be in the UK? Yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm visiting Matteo, and uh, and we're uh, you know getting a chance to talk about all this stuff since I'm not going to see you guys very often. We're coming in, coming back after the end of the um, after the end of the uh, neuroinformatics. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll try and come down. I'll I'll try and meet you then. If, uh, if you, you will, you be in London. Yeah. yeah. Good organization. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, hopefully by then I'll, I'll be able to show you a nice optimized muscle cell for the worm. Awesome. Muscle awesome. Cell that would be great. Cool. All right. Well, Matteo, I just wanted to remind you as well on the on the agenda. There are a couple of things here from before. Um, uh, yeah. Just some notes here that you can read for yourself just so when you get back into it. Um, and one of yeah. those things was uh, SPH demo stuff integration, and uh, I think that's a pretty good segue into Andre um, because this last uh, this last period was a good one for um, SPH, and uh, many movies were posted uh, by Andre. So Andre, congratulations! Do you want to say a little bit more about that? Oh, thanks. Um. Oh. Almost all results um, were mm, shown at, as a videos and a short text. Um, well, mm, anyway, I have uh, completely finished with uh, PCI speech. Um, it works um, stable. Uh, and I have fixed um, a lot of small bugs. Um, it will be useful um, for stability and so on. And um, by the way, I have fixed one uh, very serious bug. Uh, we have found that um, when so I have discovered that um, if we uh, take um, small amount of uh, particles, for example, uh, ten thousands like this, uh, but take uh, a big uh, volume um, of space which we consider 
the simulation box which um, contains all of this. And uh, the time of simulation um, grows significantly. Um, it was um, one more hidden bug which was in the original SPH OpenCL version uh, from uh, AMD. Um, so I have um, found a place uh, where it takes uh, part and um, found a way um, to make it um, to make this function work very fast. Uh, and um, well, now uh, time of its um, uh, work is um, significantly less than uh, all others, um, like. Um, neighborhood search or physics calculation. So we will not uh, notice it uh, anymore. It's not a problem. This is fixed. Um, as well, I have uh, finalized uh, the work with uh, surface tension. Now it works uh, effectively. And um, for different values of surface tension coefficient, it shows um, different and adequate um, behavior of the system. Ah, well, so now um, the only one uh, thing left uh, which we need to be done before we can start building um, uh, the muscle, the warm shell and so on. So it's elastic matter. And uh, well, it's also in the final stage. Um, I don't think that uh, there will be serious problems because um, a simple version already worked in single CPU version um, and well now we have um, good success in OpenCL version. I think in the next meeting we will have uh, something, uh, some progress uh, in the field too. And that is all for now. Great. So um, I just wanted to so just to understand. So the the movies that you've uh, that you posted are those implemented in OpenCL or are those uh, on those single CPU? No, no everything uh, on OpenCL, of course. Awesome. Uh, I don't work with the single CPU. Um, okay. I just mentioned it because um, uh, Elastic Matter was implemented once. Uh, Several months ago, on single uh, CPU, and um, if we will have some problems uh, with uh, difficult but realistic implementation, for the first time we can take uh, that formulas, uh, which are already working efficiently, and combine them with uh, um, existing uh, PCI SPH. So we have two variants. And one of them will surely work. Cool. So, um, so, so you're saying the next piece is to is to have the, the surface tension liquid with something elastic in the same environment. Is, is that yes? Is that right? Okay. Um, and is that just is that actually a different algorithm, or is it just is it just mean that you've got one thing defined with one level of viscosity and another thing defined with another level of, of viscosity? Um, no, uh, different levels of, uh, uh, sorry, um, uh, elastic matter is uh, something of another kind and um, it needs uh, additional piece of code to work um, because um, even very high viscosity uh, does not uh, give us uh, elastic matter um, because, oh, for example, uh, the honey is uh, liquid with very, very high viscosity, but uh, it uh, will not uh, jump uh, out of the floor if we will <laughs> take a piece of it and try to drop. Uh, so, uh, okay, different different material. Um, but uh, additions are not very uh, so a piece of code for support of elastic matter is not um, very big uh, if we measure the amount of code. So and 
Okay. It's not so it's not so difficult to combine them now. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, okay, great. Just, just a few days, maybe, maybe a week, and it will work. Sweet, that's exciting. Okay, great. Um, I think I also uh, want to mention. Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask Andre a question. Yeah. So, when we start thinking about. What, what, once uh, your work has reached a stage where it's integrated the elastic matter, and then um, you start thinking about a muscle cell. So with a muscle cell, you're going to have some some way of contracting the contracting the matter based on some variable, for example, voltage or concentration of calcium or something like that. Um, have you have you um, thought about how how this will be done very much? Mm, well, in my view, um, a muscle is an object uh, of the required form, um, which is made of elastic matter, uh, and um, we can uh, force the system uh, to can to contract, but to make um, pairs of um, particles, for example, one at uh, one uh, end of muscle and uh, another at uh, second end, to contract with a given uh, force, which can be calculated um, according to some formula, uh, which describes uh, its correct behavior. Um, so we can just um, make um, a pair of particles which are in the elastic matter muscle to move uh, forward to each other with a given force. Mm. So, it can so be it can sorry, be simple. Um, so, sorry, Andre. It would be a matter of injecting a force then. So basically. You inject the force, uh, and then that force applied to a given point or two given points uh, will make uh, the muscle contract. And it will be possible, basically, in the simulation, or easy to add to the simulation, this concept of an external force that you can inject. It's not an external force, though. Well, well I like the term uh, external force because. Well, in relation to this system, it's external because um, these two particles um, don't have um, some uh, natural force which uh, <laughs> makes them to, to do this uh, moment um, to each other. So. Um, Yes, it, it appears from uh, some uh, external uh, reason. Um, well, I just wanted to say that um, we can do it in different ways. Uh, one of them um, is that um, muscle has only a form of uh, real muscle, uh, but its structure is uh, uh, homogeneous. So, if it contracts, it will became, become um, wide and short. If it is correct, then I can uh, follow this uh, way. And um, another variant, I can uh, simulate this um, fine structure uh, when... Um, I don't know how it's called in biology those uh, fibers on so, or something like this, which um, are moved um, in this direction, so they yeah, yeah, have... Yeah. yeah. Um, can I just mention something? So um, this is an old diagram, but uh, I think it's still, it's still relevant. Uh, when we were kicking some design ideas around for um, how to do some of this integration, which might get to Mike's question a little bit. So. I think one is the structuring of the cell, and, and I think for that, we've 
I think we've been defining an XML schema that can define an object as a, as a grouping of, of particles. But the other piece is just kind of closing this loop of dynamics. And um, obviously, this diagram is just a, a very <laughs> superficial look at it. But I think the way that we've thought about it in the past is that you've got you know, a Hodgkin-Huxley-based muscle cell simulation, which is running on some slower clock. Um, and uh, the voltage of its membrane is supposed to alter forces. So you're, you, you're, now you're talking about thinking about specific particles that are in the SPH simulation. Those need to be modified based on um, you know, what uh, activity you've got here. So um, that's operating on this simulation, which I guess I'm calling a faster clock. I think that's true just in terms of the fact that, I don't know, just in terms of that uh, tracking the positions of these particles probably has to happen faster. Maybe that's, maybe that's not the case, but that's, that's how we were assuming it. Um, and so this idea here, so the simulation of the SPH has to hold some additional state that's longer than the integration step across here. Um, so we're thinking this kind of can define the stretch level of the fibers, and then every few steps of the HH-based simulation, this happens. So I think we came to the conclusion that um, it's some facility that the SPH solver has to have for the representation of dynamic fields so that um, as gravity is acting on the particles, now suddenly we can sort of select uh, you know, either an area of space or a specific grouping of particles and tell them that there's now a new force and that new force needs to be um, you know, driven by basically a, a function that translates the voltage here into, into force over here. Um, and the last piece of this, so one was that we were saying, let's focus on this loop first in the first iteration um, and worry about feedback as a second step, although that is important for later. Um, and then the last piece I was showing here is just to kind of illustrate the black lines or time points from the slower HH clock, red lines from the faster SPH clock, and um, just thinking a little bit about updates and these kinds of things. Um, so this was thrown up a while ago. It's sort of a conceptual way of thinking about the integration. I think it's worth now kind of coming back to this and having a look with everybody. Thoughts? So to recap, as I understand it, the design will be such that you've got this um, <clears throat> SPH solver, which is running on a faster clock. Every n, every n ticks of the clock, it will interrogate, it will interrogate the, um, the membrane potential, so which is being solved on, on a slower clock. And this, it will get the membrane potential, go back to the SPH, and now in the SPH, you've got some uh, some term in the solver whereby the attractive force between between particles is a function of the membrane potential, say. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, and that will and there's no reverse feedback. So and it'll keep doing this and over and over and over again. So the, there's this attractive force which is being updated based on what the voltage is doing. Right. So this attractive force and will it be? I suppose that maybe you haven't we haven't thought about this much. Will it be like a isometric force or will it be a, along some axis or? Yeah. So I mean, the muscle cell itself. Um, when you look at, at movies of it. Um, right, it's sort of think of it as it's, it's this elongated thing. Hang on, let me switch back. So um, it's, it's it's elongated. It tends to be kind of you know shaped like this, and and uh, and it's sitting perpendicular to the um, body. Okay, and it's, it tends to pull in this along this axis like this. So it just tends to kind of constrict in like this. So you'd imagine that you sort of define a group of particles on one end, a group of particles on the other end. Um, as part of your definition of the muscle cell, and then you basically say that, like, you know, we're going to pull, you know, on this end and on this end together as if there were a band of fibers that were kind of just going through the center of the muscle cell that were kind of pulling them together like, uh, like the contraction of a spring. And then we'll let the SPH algorithm play itself out in terms of how those other, like, how the other particles are dragged along with that, with that force as there as the... the the, um, the material, the, the elastic material of the of the wall is um, yeah, is, is pulled along. So um, this does mean we have to make sure that we 
and add that to our description of what the muscle cell is. It's like where the junction points are, what particles. Um, you know, we can partially model this on the 2D shape of the muscle cell and then kind of ex extrapolate it into 3D uh, might be one way to go. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's sort of how we've been imagining it. Um, I think it's still, still a ways to go, but we we're basically have the raw materials now to do it. Yeah, and just one thing, so um, one um, clarification. It won't be the PCI ASPH solver that at the clock will interrogate the neural solver. No, at the clock there will be a third component because PCI ASPH doesn't know anything, doesn't have any notion whatsoever about the neuronal simulation in the same way that the neuronal simulation doesn't have any notion about PCI SPH. They are both happening at the clock. When you decide to integrate, there will be a third component, an integration controller that will read, that will have a dependency on both, that will read the neuronal solver, will read the voltage if the voltage is above threshold, whatever trigger you instructed the integration controller with, if that value will be above, then this integration controller will create a force, an external force or a field, as Stephen would say, in the PCI SPH model. So it's like these two components, PCI SPH and neuronal, mm -hmm. are independent. You There is a third component which is meant to integrate one with the other. I see what you're saying about the, the, the third component which is controlling both um, and perhaps it's a d detail but probably a threshold wouldn't be the way... Yeah, whatever uh, yeah. way we decide to okay. evaluate uh, the, the trigger yeah. condition that we... and I don't know if the trigger condition will be a simple threshold or a function or whatever. Probably a... yeah, but whatever, yeah. We'll, we'll decide later. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds really good. I think Andre, um, I think you use discuss the possibility of having fine structure and modeling the cell that way. Probably, for simplicity's sake, as a first iteration, I would just go with the simple model which you described earlier, where particles are just attracted to their neighbors okay. rather than have. No, this is just my opinion, but it's. Uh, I think it's better to start with something simple and then increase complexity than. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have a capsule, um, you know, like a pill, and uh, the two ends of the capsule are pulling against each other, and it's perfectly symmetrical. That's probably um, a good start, don't you think? Oh, there is another way, uh, quite uh, realistic. Uh, uh, it's not uh, some empty uh, shell uh, with its edge, uh, edges uh, attracting to each other. Uh, we can represent it as um, elastic but uh, solid uh, construction um, yeah. where we can contract uh, every uh, adjacent particles uh, in horizontal direction. So each of them can contract uh, its distance for a small value uh, and then all uh, muscle will contract significantly. Yes. And you know what I like about that? that? You know what I like about that? That's how the actual muscle works. Right? Yeah. It's just little fibers <laughs> pulling on each other. That's right. I'm, what I'm thinking about is a simplification, but obviously, yeah, it's not, it's not even necessary given the level of modeling that we have now. Yeah. That's, that's actually really, really sweet. And that is much more... It's much more realistic than a, um, than a spring. Uh, for many reasons. Also, you can imagine that the that the longitudinal force this way um, is probably affected by the fact that these guys are compacting in this direction. So, I mean, that's just so it's like so it's like you know when you flex a muscle, the muscle is also is also uh, you know more dense when you when you touch it like this, and uh, that's something obviously that you wouldn't represent if you did a hollow thing with with um, the springs. But uh, but that kind of comes for free. That property comes for free if you were to do it that way. Um, which is actually super interesting. So, yeah, if we can pull that off, I guess I, some, I, guess I imagine that would somehow be harder, but now that I think about it, I think you're right. But probably not. That's super cool. Um, I want to also share this uh, roadmap diagram that I came up with a while ago um, that was just kind of like walking through 
um, the different, uh, you know, the, the integration of this muscle cell stuff. And um, Mike, this is before you came along, so there's no little uh, diagram here that uh, that includes you. I apologize. Uh, I'll need to update it to add you. But um, basically, the the thread up here was the stuff that Matteo, Andre, and Sergey were doing on implementing the SPH algorithm, and, and again, this this, uh, this uh, is open to you, um, this is public, uh, so you can check it out yourself, but, um, and so, um, so part of this was finishing up the SPH algorithm and then porting it into Java, I think that can now happen um, a lot better. Down here was the NeuroML part, um, this was, uh, you know, to enable this, we need to complete the NeuroML channel ML description of the muscle cell, so as you can see, we've been at that for a little while. Um, I, that piece is continuing to come together. Um, this here was a muscle cell membrane excitability simulation running just in neuron initially, right? With um, with parameters that are tuned by you know that are optimized. Here it was it was GA, but but as you uh, pointed out, it doesn't need to be GA uh, specifically. Uh, let me zoom that out again. Um, anyway, so they come together. They come together with steps like. Um, having the neuronal solver working together in our engine with the SPH and ultimately having all those pieces um, integrated. I guess this doesn't add a lot to our discussion other than, well, let me see, X XML description of the muscle cell uh, points out the fact that we have to integrate this into a solver that's in the same engine. Just kind of points out that like the whole reason that we've been bothering to build our own simulator is, is very much because of this last piece to take SPH and Hodgkin Huxley type dynamics and, and combined it otherwise probably wouldn't be worth it. Okay. Um, if we're good on that stuff, this is actually very cool. Um, I also wanted to point out this is the first meeting, although I'm never. Sorry. I'm yeah. afraid I have a train to catch. Oh, okay. So I've got to go. All right. Sorry. Well, thanks for joining. Um, we will see you soon. Bye, guys. All right. I know uh, Giovanni's also traveling, by the way, um, so he wasn't going to be able to make it. So you'll, you'll be here in a couple of weeks, Stephen? Yes. Yes. So we should okay. make plans to, to meet up. You send me an email with you when, when you plan to be in London? Yes. Okay. See you, guys. Right. See yeah. you. Bye. Um, So this is the first meeting since uh, our since the uh, paper came out, right? And so I've had, I have a link there in the uh, in the meeting minutes. So Andre, congratulations! Do you want to say anything about that uh, paper coming out? Well, it was not so simple. It was quite long. Uh, <laughs> uh, we tried. A number of uh, journals, mm, and finally, in silico biology, decided to support our publications. Publication, um, well, from all uh, authors from uh, Siberia, from our laboratory, we are grateful to um, significant help of uh, Stephen. Uh, because um, without uh, his help, uh, I think it would be impossible to publish it. Um, because our English, <laughs> of course, is far from perfect. And, um, well, scientific aspects uh, of um, our original uh, version of the paper um, during our. Um, Common work on it um, were significantly improved too. Um, so, well, this was um, a good beginning, as I hope, of our <laughs> further uh, publicational activity. Yeah. It was necessary to do because um, otherwise, um, these three or even four uh, years of cyber relevance activity. Uh, would uh, not leave uh, this uh, documental trace in um, educational um, area, but now it is. 
So um, that stage is finished, and uh, new stage, um, new work with uh, Open Worm. Um, also awaits for new uh, publications as well as new results in general. Yeah. Oh. So I this just wanted to say a couple, couple things too. So the um, it, you guys have been trying to publish this since before we met uh, last you know March, uh, last April, and um, and uh, since then we had to update it because things like the boil stuff came out, and so that. So it got updated and revised, and, uh, and I'm glad that, that uh, you know I could help. I jumped on as a middle author there. I, uh, I I was I was finishing it during a music festival in California uh, while the bands were playing, which is <laughs> which uh, you know made me real popular with my friends. Um, but I think it was ultimately worth it. I think people are very excited to see it. I think it says a lot for the project. Obviously. The bulk of this work was completed. I mean, all of the work was completed before we ever before we ever joined together. But um, I'm really glad that it, it's come out because I think it sets it sets the you know the direction for you know, where this is all going to head. Um, so, congrats on getting that out. Um, I think that is a good segue to the meeting that uh, I'm sorry I missed actually on on Monday uh, a couple days ago uh, to kind of chart the course for the future. Um, both to look at the, um, the paper that Balash has distributed, and I saw that there were some several notes on that, um, which I will share back with Balash. Um, also, to kind of think about what the next level of publications are for us here, um, I also see that there are notes for that. I've uh, I've added links to both uh, documents also into the um, into the meeting notes at the top, the publication meeting. Um, and uh, let's see. So, what I saw here from you guys, and, and thanks for jumping in. Actually, would one of you want to, one of you who was um, at that meeting, want to kind of represent uh, the bullet points that were there? Um, I think uh, you guys were all there. So, any one of you just want to say a little bit about that? And here I'm talking about the, the document that's called Open Worm Next Potential Publications. Yeah, and just let me open it and try to. <laughs> yeah. It's it's linked on the agenda, and also I'm just going to paste the link right now. Okay, yeah. okay thanks. So uh, the reason I missed, by the way, is because I invited everybody else from my from the um, from the Open Worm Google Plus uh, account, except myself, my own account. So you all got an invitation, and you all got a reminder uh, to show up at the meeting. And it, it, you know, it ended up on your calendar, and, it, and none of this happened for me. So I was like, I was on, I was there on Monday, and I was like, oh, my first meeting is at, you know, an hour after this, and I only found out later. So I, I wasn't even awake. Um, so I have to avoid doing that. And do the plus. So, so yeah. Well, from the from the document, you will, you will see there there were a couple of potential leads for future publication, like the first one was related to the optimization work that Mike and Alex and yourself are doing. So in terms of basically create and shape the muscle cell by tuning the parameters and uh, Mike felt that was something that when which completion would be something that would be published, and uh, we all kind of shared this view. The second one was uh, which is more the uh, open world related because it, if you read into it, it's basically C elegant muscle cell electrophysiology combined with physical SPH elastic matter. So when we we'll reach that, that will be definitely worth publishing, as in it would be at the first probably simulation where you have both the elastic matter and the electrophysiology activity, and you will have that in the context of the simulation engine also. So it's like it would be really the probably the big 
the first big open war, purely publication that we can aim for, and that's going to be a good one. <laughs> and the the work that team was doing in, um, in on the basically activation of the neuron. You remember the Stephen when thing was showing the the body of the worm represented yeah. as a line and like th it, things were moving. It, it's like um, Tim was saying and Tim is here, so <laughs> probably speak about it more than me. But he was saying it's an early stage but down the road there might be yeah, and Giovanni was suggesting this that down the road there might be potential for uh, publication uh, and then uh, other possibility something around is pH surface tension elastic matter I don't know if that would be something that would stand on its own or that um, would be integrated in the other open worm uh, publication that we were mentioning earlier and the simplified worm was also uh, it's like it's the idea instead of basically presenting the muscle cell integrated to basically have a publication where you don't have integration but you're basically you re-implement the version of the cyber elegance using SPH and using the simulation engine so in terms of integrating different uh, algorithms, it's not uh, obviously there yet. But as a, you know, as a whole, in the same way that the cyber elegance was well worth the publication now, the kind of next step of a sort of cyber elegance that uses elas elastic matter and uses the simulation engine might as well be worth publishing. So those were the tracks that we could think of. I don't know if you had something else in mind, uh, and uh, the case, obviously, we added. Yeah, I know. Pretty good. Um, were we thinking about a time frame for, uh, for this next one? Uh, not really. We didn't mention time frames. The time frame implicitly was defined as whenever, let's say, for each one of those things as to whenever they are ready, as in, Whenever we get the integration working, whenever the optimization—it's like Mike was probably the the one feeling more confident about being close to have something that could be published. Yeah, because it's closer to his target probably. And but other than that, no, there were no, there was not mention of any specific so time. Right. So some of us are, are more driven by publications than others, and I think that uh, you know Mike's work, um, you know, has got a nice story that with the optimization. Uh, Andre, your stuff with uh, you know, the PCI SPH does as well, um, and I do want to make sure that um, you know participation in OpenWorm doesn't mean that uh, it takes longer for publications to come out. So right. I mean, we can think about this as a story. That's in progress, and you know, we're not we're not gonna. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm not planning on wrapping up you know Open Worm, uh, you know, next year or anything like that. So, um, so I guess the question is, to some extent, we can think about like what our final technical goals are, and or, but we can also think about it as like, well, when do we want to get a paper out, and um, how to how to define some chunk some story uh, from what we've done that would be. You know, a publication. Sometimes this is talked about as the the minimum publishable unit uh, in science, which is to say, like, where do you have a story that you know some some journal would accept? Um, so I guess just for Andre, for Andre's sake, um, you probably want to get a publication out. You know, first half of next year, I would imagine, or you know, or it would be pretty close to getting one out, right? Or would you? Or are you okay if it you know, if it would you know, be the second half of just roughly speaking, do you have a preference? Are you do you feel a sense of urgency about getting another paper out? Oh, well, no. Um, one already exists. I think that next um, should better be uh, better uh, than quick. Uh, yeah. So, 
quicker. I think it'd be hard to get one slower, it, just with the bad luck that you had. Um, I think uh, it'd be hard to have that same kind of bad luck twice. Um, okay. So let's it, you know let let's let's keep thinking about it. I, I do think that there are definitely chunks of this that we can carve out. I think that if we just go, do, go to a muscle cell, and we do a muscle cell, we could tell a story on that before going back out to the larger. I also think that simplified worm is another piece that we want to think about. And um, you know, Tim, how much how much are you interested in seeing that that stuff published? How much are you interested in seeing that published as a group? You obviously you know that piece that you started to to put together. You know, you've really been driving it yourself, so also feel free to you know, publish it on on your own or with a, lim a more limited group. Um, you know, there's no, no I, I mean, I, I was looking at it from a group perspective. So I mean, yeah. there's, there's nothing that I'm doing that didn't come from this group, and I'm, I, you know, there's no, there's no significance to me to do it on my own. Or, but but like I told the team last uh, last Monday was that uh, I'm more interested in writing this up for the group. If it turns into something more, that's wonderful. But uh, you know, to me, it was more of let's let, let me write up what I'm doing so that the group has a, a better understanding of what I've done, and we can use that in some way to apply to what we're doing here. Cool. Okay. Sounds good. So maybe we can leave the topic of publications for now. Um, I think we should uh, pick it back up at the next meeting after we have a little bit more time to think about this stuff, but. Thanks for doing that. Again, I will share. I will share the notes with um, with Balash. He sent me an email recently. He's still engaged, um, you know, with this stuff. Um, but I need to. I need to move back with him. Okay. Um, I guess I also want to point out. I, I've been adding updates to the to this as we've been going along. So there is there is an INCF poster, um, which is uh, you know which we've gotten um, completed. I believe it's getting printed up uh, this week, and uh, we'll be presenting it next week. Um, here's the link. Oh, wait, that's actually I know that link is going to get there. Uh, link is also in the um, is in the notes. If you haven't seen the poster, um, check it out. Um, it's mainly focusing on the connect dome stuff that we've done. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, there you go. That looks better. Um, so that also happened this week. Um, okay, let's, um, so then other than that, let's go to Tim. Um, so Tim, are there any other updates we should know about that we haven't discussed yet? Obviously, I, looks oh. like I missed emails. Uh, we'll be meeting later today. We'll talk about that. I apologize. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, sounds good. Other stuff? I think, no, I think from my conversations earlier that, uh, you pretty much know what I'm working on. So <laughs> I'm definitely digging into the sensory aspects of it um, and just continue to really pound on that. Cool. And of course, that's leading into my own, you know, playing around with what I'm doing as well. So, cool. Alrighty. Well, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. And uh, although Porg isn't here, um, he did actually help us quite a bit uh, over the last uh, over the last section and in, uh, in uh, pushing out the NeuroML version. Oh yeah, that's the other update, right? So he pushed out the NeuroML version of the Connectome, um, and um, and so there's this site called Neuromorpho.org. I may have mentioned it in the past. Uh, and it's basically this public repository for neuronal um, shapes. It's got uh, shapes for all sorts of different kinds of, of species. It's fly and a, a whole lot of, you know, like cat neurons and human, I don't know if it has any human neurons, but mammalian neurons. And um, so given that we had gotten the neurons to a stage where we actually had NeuroML for it, I sent uh, Giorgio Scoli, who's the director of that uh, program, a, a note. and. Um, They've been uh, downloading the NeuroML representation of the Connectome, and they're working on putting it up on their site, which means uh, you know more traffic for the project, and uh, you know more. It's it's good to be integrated. Um, you know this stuff is all public, and then as we continue to evolve the, that um, 
that connectome, obviously, it's not finished yet, but it's, I think it's got enough to be recontributed. Um, we can continue to send versions out there as well. So we'll be up on there, I hope, in the next week or two. Um, hopefully, we can announce that at the INCF meeting, but um, I mean, we can say that it's on its way. Um, but I think that's really cool. Uh, that uh, there's basically no open, there's no C. elegans neurons at all on the site, period. Um, and I know that the site gets quite a bit of traffic for folks looking into morphologies. So we can expect to see down the road additional folks that are, um, you know, that are that are coming through the project through that channel, which would be great. Um, okay. Great. Well, uh, kind of coming to the end here. Um, you guys have any questions, issues, anything sort of unplanned stuff? Uh, questions about how the next couple weeks are going to work? No, they just the the I sent I sent an email about it, but I'll just mention it. Uh, basically, you were asking earlier about the integration with the PCI SPH solver and the simulation engine and. Uh, that is something that will now, uh, well, we'll probably have another iteration with Sergey to port the new version of the of the solver to the simulation engine, and then the other roadblock we have what is the support for web sockets in Virgo. Yeah, and so that is that should be released uh, September thirtieth. So it's yeah. now getting closer and closer because. It, basically, by the time we'll come back from Munich, uh, and by the time we'll be back in San Diego, basically, we'll have that so we can start hooking up the front end that we have uh, with the simulation. And we can, uh, basically, the moment that we'll have the videos that Andre is posting real time on the browser, that will be, I think, a moment to cheer up for everybody. <laughs> So that's going to be the next thing that probably will happen in terms of concrete result before, uh, obviously, the integration with the neural solver and the neural solver itself. It's something that will happen farther down the line. But this will probably be the next concrete result in terms of the simulation engine and integrated with PCI and SPH. Okay. Great. Sounds good. Anything else, guys? All right. Awesome. Uh, good stuff. I will talk to you guys another couple weeks. Tim, later today. Andre, you rock. Uh, Thanks. Uh, I'm excited to see where all this goes. So. All right. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye, Stephen. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.